Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Okay, so this is, I think, the third video that uh, that we're doing this morning. Uh, I've got the microscope out and everything, showing, uh, trying to shed some light uh, and a, an awful lot of magnification on sharpening. Okay, the toughest part about sharpening is that you can't see what you're doing because everything's so small. Magnifying glass will help. Uh, a jeweler's loop will help even more. Um, I picked up this uh, um, this fancy new stereo microscope. Um, I want to say you'd have to look at my other video when I first got it and started showing some stuff on uh, edge corrosion on a straight razor underneath the microscope. But I want to say I gave like 700 bucks for this microscope. I understand that's completely out of the question for for the you know the the person who wants to sharpen their kitchen knives at home. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is show you what things look like so that you know and then uh, show you what they look like underneath the microscope and then give you examples that you can see and feel with the naked eye and your fingertips to know what it is that you're doing when you're sharpening a knife. Because sharpening a knife, remember, is as simple, I mean all you're doing is taking a chunk of steel and rubbing it on a rock, okay? Anybody can sharpen as, as long as you have the, the ability to use one hand. Um, you don't even need both hands, you know. So if somebody lost a hand in an accident, you know, they should still be able to sharpen a knife just with one hand. It might take a little bit longer, but, you know, that's okay. Anyway, so first video was we were looking through um, um, how to tell if your knife is dull besides the fact that it just won't cut. Um, we looked at uh, a couple of edges underneath the microscope uh, to show how you can check with uh, the glint of reflecting light off of the edge. The second video that we shot was super exciting. Um, you know, I'm a big burr base sharpener, and we got to show some really nice images of a burr on a knife edge, and I'm blown away. I mean, they're they're just awesome. I mean, as much as I love sharpening a knife and everything, and I've never been able to see an edge like this. And so, I don't know if you can tell in my voice, but I am super excited to be bringing this to y'all because I hope that it'll make, it'll take the mystery out of sharpening and give you a cookbook type recipe. Do this, look for this. Do this, look for this. Step by step, go from a dull knife to a sharp knife. And we'll probably do that this afternoon. I think I'll probably have to recharge the batteries in the GoPro. So, anyways, what we got here is we have got the factory fresh edge off of that uh, charade Barlow. Okay. <coughs> Actually, we'll we'll zoom you in in just a little bit more, so we can really get a close look at all this stuff. Okay, so this video is mostly going to be the side view of edges. Let's go up just a hair. Speaking of a hair, I suppose I should grab... Um, I've got some uh, longer hairs in a Ziploc baggie up here so that I can... Uh, when I was learning how to work with a straight razor, um, my hair sh the, the girl that cuts my hair um, gave me a couple of Ziploc bags from... Uh, some other haircuts so that uh, so that I could test edges out. So let's pull a hair out here and let's see if we can't get that hair just so you can kind of have an idea of what kind of magnification we're at here. Oh, there it went. There it is. Oh, no. There. That is a human hair at this magnification. So I hear that most human hairs are um, about three thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, to put that in perspective, a uh, post-it note, the yellow ones, which I like the best, those are about five thousandths of an inch thick. So that's what kind of magnification we're under right here. Let's pull that off to the side and bring our edge back and then bring it in focus. A little bit more. 
I'm sorry you guys are having to spend so much time watching me kind of fiddle with the scope and getting everything in focus, but honestly, I mean, I'm kind of sort of learning how to edit videos, but um, I'm not really all that great at it, and it's really slow, and I'd much rather just show you a little bit extra, so you can fast forward if you need to. So this is the Charade Barlow. This right here is our uh, blade bevels um, and the finish that's on the blade, okay? This right here is our transition zone between the blade bevels and the edge bevels, okay? This right here, from here to here, is our edge bevel. This is the part that contacts the stone when you sharpen. And of course, at the, the very, very top, that is our actual edge. You can see a couple of little bitty um, glints right there. Um, it might look a little bit rough underneath the microscope, but remember what kind of magnification that we're at. Okay, so this is a very, very close view. Um, if you think about steel as being, you know, solid, um, it'll help to think of steel as being like like compacted sand or um, uh, what's that type of stone like sandstone or slate or something like that where you've got a whole bunch of of grains that are all mashed together really really tight okay that's what steel is 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 like I probably made made just that, that's probably about as clear as mud but anyway so so what we're looking at here is the scratch pattern. Okay, so we've got a nice even scratch pattern, the whole width of that edge bevel, and you can see it goes all the way up to the edge, and you know, it's nice and even, everything looks good. This little bit of uh, darker stuff up in here at the very edge, I believe that's probably buffed. Okay, so when they sharpen this knife at the factory, they ground the blade, put the blade bevels in, and then once that was done they came back and they sharpened the blade on a grinder because all the the scratches are going at 90 degrees to the edge itself. Okay. Then once they uh, they had a burr on both sides then they came back up and they knocked that burr off with a buffing wheel and that's this this darker stuff right here. It's um, a more polished type steel. Okay. So this is what we want <coughs> an edge to look like, with the exception of, um, you know, this type of edge would be made if we were sharpening the blade back and forth like this on a stone. Okay, most people will go at an angle like this, so your scratch pattern will be like this. You can go circles, or circles that way, in which case your scratch pattern will show up whatever motion that you were using to sharpen, okay? It doesn't really matter what motion that you use to sharpen as long as it's as consistent as you can go. And uh, you'll want to see that the scratch pattern is even from the transition zone all the way to the very edge, okay? Here is an example of a problem with um, a scratch pattern. And like I said, you guys aren't going to have this, uh, this fancy microscope at home, more than likely. Uh, where are we at? But I will show you how to get around that. Oh, we're at too much magnification here. Okay. So now this is a different knife. This is my old uh, Boy Scout buck knife from when I was a kid. This is your blade finish. This is your scratch pattern. See how it's cross hatched? Okay, I haven't sharpened this knife in so long. I think the last time I actually used it for anything besides pulling it out was, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that. So who knows how I sharpened it at that time, but it looks like I was changing up my motions. So, I would go like this for a while, and then maybe like this for a while, okay? So that's how you get those conflicting scratch patterns right there. But there's a spot in here up next to the heel that'll show you what I want to show you on this particular video here. 
right there. Okay, so up in here we have our edge be or our blade bevels. Then we have our transition zone between the blade bevels and the edge bevels. Okay, then we have our very edge. So you can see in this one how we've got 90 degree scratches to the the edge. We've got kind of a crisscross kind of wild pattern on the edge bevels. And then right here, you've got this dark stuff. This dark stuff is where the edge bevels do not meet at the very edge. Okay. This is a big indication of either using too fine a stone or not getting the burr. Like I said, the last time I sharpened this knife, um, you know, my sharpening skills aren't near what they are now. And that mainly comes through practice. You know, I've probably sharpened, I don't know, a couple thousand knives since the last time I sharpened this one. Um, and so you just learn and you get better as you go. It's, it's, it's the way it is and it's the way it should be. Okay, so if I was sharpening this and bringing it to a burr, this would never happen. Okay, because... As I was feeling for that burr, on this particular knife, I would have felt it up here, felt it up here, and then all of a sudden, I wouldn't have felt the burr right in here because I didn't bring the edge bevel all the way down, okay? So, this is something that I can, I can't quite see that on the edge with the naked eye, but I'll show you something that you can see, all right? And that is, and where did I put it? Ha. The amazing magic marker. Um, I like red or green or even blue for this application. Black is a little bit tougher to see. So what you do is you go ahead and mark up your edge. You can see I've got the edge marked there with the magic marker, right? Okay. Once the magic marker is on there, now you go ahead, lay the blade flat on the stone, raise it up until you feel your edge bevel, and then you start sharpening, right? Okay. Well, if you're sharpening an awful lot and you know you still haven't pulled up a burr yet, go if you've magic markered this, now what you can do, I remember what this looks like. Edge bevel or blade bevels, edge bevels, and then this part right here that never got touched. Now you can bring that blade up almost there, almost there. Look at that. Now this is something that you can totally see with the naked eye. Okay? And this picture right here up up in the top here, this is our uh, uh, blade bevels. And I marked up quite a bit of them. I think I marked a little bit past uh, the transition zone. So the transition zone might be up around in here. And then, so what I did on this one was I marked the edge, and then I took two passes on a stone at what I thought was the correct edge angle, or the, you know, the, the angle of the blade to the stone. And you can see right here this bright stuff where the marker got worn away. All this stuff right here, the marker's still there. Okay, that is something that you can really see with the naked eye as long as you've got you know normal uh, eyesight. And it's uh, another indication that you can look at to see how far you're going on on a knife. Okay, so let's say you've got like this one right here. This is a uh, you know the one that we're looking at. This is a uh, you know an eight inch shaft. Um, think I bought it at a yard sale or something and the edge is in really really poor shape I mean you can see even without the ink or the the red ink you know how this falls off here you know so the edge isn't even close to even being set you know or shaped much less it being sharp and I want to say I picked it up because um, I, I kind of like the shape of the handle and I wanted to duplicate it on something you know who knows you can see up in here there's pitting now whether that's from corrosion or the you know these knives sell for like 10 bucks at Walmart 
Oh, well, maybe I did buy it from Walmart. There we go. So you pick this up, knife up, normal price for $13, and it was on sale for 5 So I can't imagine this has got the highest quality steel in it, so that just could be voids in the steel. You never know. But you can tell with this, you'll really be able to see with the naked eye where that ink has been removed and where it's still there. Now, that'll let you know either, um, you know, to adjust your edge angle if you want to a little bit or just to keep right on going, all right? Once you see with the naked eye that all of this ink is gone, you know, from the transition zone to the edge, if you haven't brought up a burr already, you're really, really close, so just keep on going, okay? So, like I said, like on this knife right here, um, can't remember where I was going with that. Yeah, this knife's going to be quite a bit of work. So, um, with an edge this dull, what you probably want to do is, you know, you, it'd be best to have your edge kind of centered, okay? So, so that you had an edge that looked like this, fairly even on this side and on this side, okay? Which um, would be a little bit more desirable than having an edge that looked like this, or having an edge that looked like this, okay? So, if you can, it's best to try to grind or sharpen evenly. So, if you take, you know, 20 strokes on one side of the blade, so if you were like this, and you took 20 strokes on this side of the blade, you'd kind of want to take about 20 strokes on this side of the blade. In real practice, hey, you know what? Sharpen on this side. Oh, dang it. Uh, our camera timed out. So in real practice, you know, sharpen some on this side, 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 and kind of bring it in even, you know. Um, honestly, I don't really know that it makes that much of a difference if you're cutting with a knife that's, now this screen timed out, if it's absolutely perfect like this, or if it's a little bit like this, you know, I mean, more than likely your hand's not going to be able to tell the difference in whatever it is that you're cutting anyway. But, so let's say this edge is really messed up this bad. Okay, well you might want to mark up both sides and then grind, grind or sharpen this side until it kind of starts getting to where you just got a thin ribbon of, of red on this side and then swap sides and then bring that side to where it's kind of got that same width of ribbon at the bottom, remark it, and then sharpen this side until that ribbon of ink is gone, and then go to this side, sharpen until that ribbon of ink is gone. Then um, come back to the original side, sharpen until you get a burr, go back to the other side, sharpen until you get a burr. You could use that to go in steps if you wanted to or if your knife was in really bad shape. And, you know, we might do that on the next video. Um, go start to finish from an extremely dull knife to a sharp knife and showing you steps in between. You know, just like the cookbook where, you know, you do this until this happens. Do this until this happens. Do this until this happens. Do this, check it, and you should be sharp. Anyway, so this is the magic marker trick. Um, like I said, it really helps if you don't have a fancy microscope like this to kind of let you know about what angle it is that you're sharpening. Now, don't get me wrong. Let's see. Uh, 19 minutes. Uh, we'll cover that one in the next one. Um, and that's the, the importance or lack thereof of uh, keeping... A precise angle on every single stroke. So anyway, the magic marker trick. So between the burr and the magic marker trick, um, pretty much between those two things and your fingertips, which um, you know is something that's easily available to everybody out there, um, you should be able to sharpen sharpen your knife um, at home and start practicing and getting better at it. Again, sharpening is super easy. 
All you're doing is taking a chunk of steel and rubbing it on a rock. Again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you again here in uh, it's lunchtime. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes or so.